guys, Miss Miklos here with our first lecture of this brand new exciting chapter on sequences and series. And this is one of my favorite chapters and um, it is something that most of you guys have never seen before, which is fun. And today we're specifically talking about section one, which is arithmetic sequences. And I want to start by just talking about what is the difference between a sequence and a series because we're going to see these two terms a lot this chapter and we definitely need to know what is the difference between them. So a sequence is a set of numbers, for example, 2, 5, 8. And we can definitely see that there's a pattern in these numbers. In fact, it looks like we are adding 3 to get to the next term in our sequence. A series is very similar but it is actually a sum of a sequence. So when we see a series, that would be like doing 2 plus 5 plus 8. Okay, so a sequence, we're just finding a number in the sequence. A series means we are finding a sum of that sequence. This chapter, we will see that there are two different types of sequences that we're going to be working with. Um, the first is what we're going to talk about today, and that is what we call arithmetic. The second is what we call geometric. In order to tell what type of sequence it is, I need to have at least three consecutive terms, or it needs to give me some more information. So arithmetic means we have what we call a common difference. That means that I am adding the same term, the same number each time to get to my next term in the sequence. So for example, 2, 5, 8, 11, dot, dot, dot. We would say in this case that our common difference is 3. And one way we could see that is if I take any two terms in the sequence and I subtract one term from the previous term, um, 11 minus 8 would give us 3. A geometric sequence means that we have a common ratio, which we use the letter R to represent. This means I am multiplying by the same number each time to get to my next term. So 2, 6, 18, 54. To find what our ratio is, we would do any term divided by the previous term, which we would see in this case our ratio would be equal to 3. And of course, I could have made it way easier and done 6 divided by 2, but I just wanted to show any term divided by the previous term gives us our ratio. So our problems today are going to look like this. Negative 4, negative 1, 2, dot, dot, dot. What is the 30th term? And it, looking at this, we could definitely figure out that it looks like we're adding 3 each time. And I know some of you guys are great with your calculators and you would just want to go plus 3, plus 3, plus 3, blah, 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 30 times. But obviously, there must be an easier way to figure this out. And there is an easier way. And we are so smart. We are going to derive, which means we are going to actually come up with the nth term formula. And my big like statement to you guys today is this is definitely going to be on a quiz. So I would make sure I am paying attention to how to derive and come up with this formula. So our first step, I'm just going to say our sequence is a sub 1, a sub 2, a sub 3, a sub 4, dot, 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 all the way up until a sub n. So this subscript is telling me what term in the sequence it is. And our goal is to figure out what would be an easier way to find a sub n. And so, based on what we said earlier, we said the way that we get to the second term is by adding the common difference to the first term. So, I'm going to go ahead and say this is like a sub 1. a sub 2 is like a sub 1 plus d, because that is our common difference. Our third term is like a sub 1 plus 2d, because it's like plus the difference plus the difference again. A sub 4 is like a sub 1 plus 3d. All the way up into a sub n, we're kind of noticing a pattern here. Our coefficient of d is 1 less than the term it is in the sequence. So if this is the nth term in the sequence, it would be a sub 1 plus 
n minus 1 times d. And in fact, what we have just shown is that the nth term in the sequence is equal to the first term in the sequence plus n minus 1 times the common difference. This is definitely a, a formula that we need to have memorized. We're using it a ton today. But I want to stress, on the quiz, you guys will have a blank sheet where you need to do all three of these steps and fill this in. So let's just recap what everything in this particular equation stands for. Okay, so just to recap, a sub n is any term in the sequence. So whether it's the 29th term or the 5 millionth term, we could go ahead and put that value there. a sub 1 represents the first term in the sequence. n is the placement in the sequence. And what I mean by that is if we're trying to find the fifth term, this value would be 5 because that's where it is in the sequence. Whatever the value of the fifth term would be a sub n. So these are very connected to one another. d is our common difference. And just a reminder that the way we find d, it is any term in our sequence minus the previous term. So I would definitely make sure you have everything that is on this screen right now committed to memory because I will ask you on the quiz to replicate this. And we are going to be using this formula on every problem on your suggested problems today. Okay, so back to problem number one. What is the 30th term? So, first of all, I want to figure out what is our common difference. And I know our common difference is any term minus the previous term, which I get negative 1 plus 4, which is 3. And I want to make sure, is that consistent? Okay, now, today's going to be nice and easy because everything is arithmetic. But down the road, when we get to our test, one of the more difficult things is just to determine, is it arithmetic, is it geometric? What formula are we using? Okay, so I know negative one, plus, negative 1 plus 3 is 2, so this is arithmetic. Okay, so we know the d is 3. Our first term is negative 4. We are trying to find our 30th term, and we know n is 30 because that is the term we're trying to find. So once again, our formula is a sub n equals a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. So I'm going to go ahead and substitute in the things we know. a sub n is what we're trying to find, and in fact, if I want to, instead of n there, I can write a sub 30, because that's really what we're trying to find. a sub 1 is negative 4 plus 30 minus 1 times 3. Now if you guys notice, this is a much quicker way to determine the 30th term in the sequence rather than just relying on our calculator. Now, I think you guys are probably seeing that our calculators are extremely important in this chapter as we're gonna have to deal with some kind of big numbers, okay? Other thing I just wanna point out, since I'm finding the 30th term, this is 30. That's really important that we realize that those are, the subscript is our n value. So if I'm going through and evaluating, I have a sub 30 equals negative four, plus 29 times 3. So that tells me that the 30th term in our sequence is 83. So maybe right now you're thinking, yeah, I could have done that in my calculator. But if we look at number 2, there's no way that we're going to find the 1,578th term just by adding repeatedly in your calculator. So we really need to rely on this formula. So first thing is I'm going to find the common difference. So I'm taking any term minus the previous term, and I get 14. And let's just check. 6 plus 14 is 20. 20 plus 14 is 34. So we're good. This time I'm trying to find the 1,578th term, which means n is 1,578. And our first term is 6. So once again, I'm doing a sub n equals a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. So I'm going to write a sub 1,578 equals 6 plus 1,578 minus 1 times 14. So we can definitely see we have some bigger values this time. So I get the a sub 1,500 
and 78 is equal to 6 plus 1577 times 14. And when I put that into my calculator, I get that the 1,578th term is 22,084. So honestly, if this is the type of problem that we're getting, it doesn't get much more difficult than this. What is really imperative is knowing this formula and being able to figure out all those values that we need to substitute in. Now, of course, they wouldn't all be that easy, though, and you guys know me well enough to know that. Um, so looking at number three, what makes this one more difficult is they're giving me the fifth term and the eighth term, and I have no clue what the first term is. So this one is a little bit different because I'm really unsure how to find the common difference because I can't really tell based on these values. So our major issue become that we do not know a sub 1 or d. We know that if we have two unknowns, we're not going to be able to solve that equation if we have a single equation. So I'm going to do something a little bit different here. And I'm kind of sketching out what this would look like. Okay, so I have all these blanks, and then I know the fifth number is 5, 6, 7th, we don't know, but we know the eighth number is 98. The thing that I do know is that the difference is consistent throughout the entire sequence. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to temporarily think of this value as a sub 1. Okay? Now we know that that is not a sub 1, but all this is going to do is help us find the difference. If this is the first term, this would be the second term, the third term, and this would be our temporary a sub 4. Okay, and the way that I would double check this without drawing it all out, I have to see 8 minus 5 has to be the same difference as n minus 1. Now, we already figured out n is 4, but let's just pretend here. So I would get 3 equals n minus 1, so 4 is that term in the sequence. Okay, and the reason why this is going to help me out is I'm going to do a sub n equals a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. And this time I'm going to say our nth term is 98 and we are calling that the temporary fourth term. Our first term here is 5 plus, okay, I have 4 minus 1 and we're trying to find out what is our common difference. So when I go through this, I get 98 equals 5 plus 3D. So 93 equals 3D. So 31 is our common difference. Now, as soon as I know our common difference, I can totally forget about these temporary values, and I'm going to go back to our original problem now. And we have a choice here. I can choose, do I want to use the fifth term? Or do I want to use the eighth term? And I normally choose the smaller terms just because it's nice in my opinion. So our fifth term is 5. It's just a coincidence that n is 5 and the nth term is 5. We do not know what a sub 1 is. That is our goal to find it. But I do know that our common difference now is 31. So I get 5 equals a sub 1 plus... 4 times 31, 5 equals a sub 1 plus 124, and when I subtract 124 from both sides, I get negative 119 is equal to a sub 1. So just to recap what we did here, we had to go ahead and just fast forward in the sequence to figure out what is our common difference. So I just temporarily made this our first term, which would make it first, second, third, fourth. The other way we did that, okay, 8 minus 5 equals n, our new temporary term, minus 1. Okay, so we also figured out it was the fourth term from that. Using our formula then, I went ahead and figured out our common difference was 31, and once I knew that, I could substitute in. Okay, and just to remind us, the reason why we had to do this 
is because originally I did not know a sub 1 and I also did not know our common difference. And our final problem for this lecture, um, we're going to say a sub n is equal to negative 2, 12, d is negative 8, a sub 1 is 100. This time we're trying to find n. Okay, so basically this is asking us what placement in the sequence is negative 2, 12. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to write a sub n equals a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d. And for a lot of you, I think it would be a great idea to write it out every single time until we have that memorized. Okay, we know that our nth term here is negative 212. Our first term is 100. I have no clue what my n value is. Okay, that's what we're trying to find here. So I have n minus 1 times negative 8. So I'm going to start by subtracting 100, so I get negative 312 equals n minus 1 times negative 8. And at this point, there's really two things that I could go ahead and do. Okay, the first thing I could go ahead and do, I could distribute negative 8 to both of these. What I would rather do, though, is divide both sides by negative 8, because this is going to cancel those out. And it's going to go ahead and tell me that this is 39. Okay, I have 39 equals n minus 1 then. So 40 is equal to n. So what this tells me is that negative 212 is the 40th term in my sequence. And this would be a logical answer because our difference is a negative value. So we're starting at 100, and I know we're subtracting 8 each time, so this number is decreasing and eventually will go into negative values. Another note, I know that n always has to be a whole number because it is the placement in the sequence. We never have the half number in the sequence or the negative fourth number in the sequence. It's always a number 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. Okay, so this is our first equation that we're going to be learning this chapter. Um, we're going to have definitely a few formulas that we need to memorize. So I would make sure that I have this one down in memory so I'm good to go when we add new stuff in in our next lecture.